Practice listening test for IELTS, version 2. Instructions. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. In the first part of section 1, you will hear the announcement of tonight's TV programmes on Radio 4. As you listen to the announcement, fill in the form with the information you need. Now you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. TV programmes. Good evening. You are listening to Radio 4 and this is Steve Collins with news of some of tonight's programmes. At 8 o'clock on BBC One, Ron Fleming talks with Alan Cross, an American writer of Western stories. He has written about 20 novels about cowboys. That's all in Face to Face at 8 o'clock on BBC One. Following that, at 9 o'clock, it's the film. You are going to have Titanic. It captured 14 Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, Best Director and Best Actress for Kate Winslet. Watch Titanic at 9 on BBC One. On BBC Two, at 7.30 tonight, Sports. That's the live coverage of football between England and Germany. In tonight's What Do You Think? on channel BBC Two at 10 o'clock. Selina White talks with Dr George Douglas from the World Wildlife Fund about his special study of elephants in Africa. So that's What Do You Think on BBC Two. Turning to ITV at 10.15, Ian Black investigates the life and music of Jan Syllabus in tonight's Sounds Around. And after that, the Edinburgh Symphony Orchestra will give a performance of his music. Sounds Around starts at 10.15. Finally, on Channel 4 in tonight's Holidays, Cliff Timpson looks at holidays in China. During the programme, he'll interview some people who have visited the country and a travel agent from London who is organising a package tour to Tibet of China this summer. If you are interested in somewhere different for your holidays this year, Watch Holidays at 9.30 on Channel 4. In the second part of this section, you are going to hear some news on Voice of America. Look at questions 7 to 13. Now listen to the news and answer questions 7 to 13. You are listening to Voice of America. Good afternoon. Here are the news at 5.30. News headlines. El Nino-driven tornadoes killed at least 39 people in central Florida. More than 200 dead in crash. Jury sides with Oprah. An Ann signs deal with Iraq. Darkness amid daylight. El Nino-driven tornadoes killed at least 39 people last night in central Florida. Many houses were destroyed. Some people escaped from tornadoes wearing only pyjamas. The weather left 180,000 customers without power. Meanwhile, a warm El Nino winter started many plants booming early. Now a bitter cold front, forecast in northern Florida today, threatens to destroy some crops. More than half the peach and strawberry crop is in bloom and threatened by the cold snap. Flight C-1676 crashed and exploded in fog and rain Monday night near Taipei Airport as it returned from the resort island of Bali, Indonesia. All 196 people on board, 182 passengers and 14 crew, died, along with seven people on the ground. It was the worst crash ever in Taiwan. Most of the dead were Taiwanese tourists returning from Bali. 
Several Americans were reported to be among the dead. It was unclear what caused the crash. A China airline official said the flight data recorders had been recovered and sent to the United States for analysis. Jury slides with Oprah. A jury today rejected a lawsuit by Texas cattleman, who says Oprah Winfrey show about the dangers of mad cow disease caused the market to plummet and cost the million of dollars. Miss Winfrey, a famous talk show host, has won the legal battle against Texas cattleman. The cattleman. Has sued her on April 16, 1996 episode of the Oprah Winfrey Show that they said gave the false impression that American beef spread mad cow disease to people. Annan signed steel with Iraq. UN Secretary General Kofi Annan signed an agreement with Iraq on the standoff in the Persian Gulf and presented the terms to the UN Security Council. But U.S. forces continue to strengthen their presence in the Gulf. Darkness amid daylight. The shadow of the moon swept across the earth at 1,200 miles per hour. Folks in the Caribbean had their tanning time interrupted for about four minutes during the eclipse. That's the end of section one. You'll have 30 seconds to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. In section two, you will hear a conversation between Pat and her friend Clara and an interviewer. First, listen to the conversation. As you listen to the conversation, write T if the statement is true, F if the statement is false, or N if there is no information given. Now you will have some time to look at questions fourteen to sixteen. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions fourteen to sixteen. Six three two one nine four seven. Is that you, Clara? Yes. Who's calling? This is Pat. Hi, Pat. How are you? I haven't heard from you for ages. What are you doing? Nothing very interesting. That's the reason I'm ringing. I need some advice from you. I want to ask you about interviews. Have you had a lot of them? Yes, I have too many. I know you are a very successful woman. Could you tell me the sort of questions you're usually asked? Let me think. The first few questions are almost always the same. I call the "wo" questions, such as, "Why do you want to leave your present job?" Would you speak slowly? I want to write them down. I'm ready now. Go on, please. Yes. Why do you want to leave your present job? Why are you interested in the new job? Where did you graduate? When was that? What was your major? How much are you paid in your present job? How much do you expect to be paid in the new job? Where do you live? How do you get to work? Oh yes, I'm always asked if I'm married. It's very boring. They're very helpful. Thank you very much. You know, I'll go for an interview tomorrow. Oh, really? Good luck. The next day, Pat is in the interview room. Listen to the interview. First, you'll have some time to look at questions seventeen to nineteen. Now listen to the interview and answer questions seventeen to nineteen. Hello, you must be Miss Liu. Yes, Pat Liu. I'm Roger Evan. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. You're applying for a position as a research engineer, is that correct? Yes. Why are you interested in this job? I like to do research. I think it's a challenge for me. It will give me lots of room for initiative. Where did you receive your bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering? 
from Leeds University. Oh, that's an excellent engineering school. And you are there now, working on your masters? Yep, I am. And for the past two years, you've been working as an auto mechanic. Yes, I was working part time. So you're not presently employed. No, I was working at the job up until a week ago. I no longer have that position. Could you tell me why you want to leave that job now, rather than waiting until you have finished your degree? Well, I was dismissed from the position. I see. Could you go into some details for that for me? Well, I'm not willing to file a lawsuit, but the、um, the manager had received a customer complaint about having a woman mechanic. In fact, he hired a man to replace me. So you believe it was a case of sexual discrimination? Oh yes, I do. But it's very difficult to prove. Yes, it would be. We're fortunate here to have a fair administration. I suppose it has something to do with our new president, Miss Lewis. Miss Liu. How much do you expect to be paid in the new job? Well, that's the end of section two. You'll have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. In section three, the interviewer will talk with three people. The first one is John, who is British but has worked in Japan. He talks about his experience of living and working in Japan. As you listen, fill in the gaps. Now you will have some time to look at questions twenty to twenty-four. Now listen to the first interview and answer questions twenty to twenty-four. Good morning, John. You've been in Japan for quite a long time now. Hmm. What differences do you notice between the two countries? I find people are much busier in Japan. They seem to work the whole day from Monday to Saturday, even in summer. Oh. It's very, very humid and hot, and you need to take showers three times a day. Yes, it's cooler in England. That's right, but in the north it is much colder than England, especially in winter, minus thirty degrees centigrade. I've also found that Japan is much more mountainous than Britain, especially in the north. The mountains are much higher and much more rocky. They are very beautiful. You like mountains? Yes, as Japan is a mountainous country. The cities are more crowded and the houses are smaller. They don't have a lot of space. Are there a lot of tall buildings in big cities? No, not many, because there are a lot of earthquakes in Japan. So in a way, it's more dangerous to live in Japan because of the earthquakes and the pollution. Thank you, John. Then the interviewer talks with Keiko, a Japanese girl from Osaka. She is studying in Britain. Listen to what she says about Britain. As you listen, answer the questions by writing no more than three words for each answer. First, look at questions twenty-five to twenty-eight. Now listen and answer questions twenty-five to twenty-eight. Now let's talk with Keiko, a Japanese student studying in Britain. Hello, Keiko. How long have you been studying in Britain? Hello, about three years. So, what differences do you notice between the two countries? Obviously, the biggest difference is the people. They are rather reserved, rather cold. But once you have made a friend, it's a friend for life. But it usually takes some time. I've got many English friends now. They are quite friendly and sincere. Oh, good. What about their way of life? Well, 
It's certainly more relaxed here. In Japan, people work a lot harder than you do. Our work always comes first. You have tea breaks that get longer and longer. It's the speed of life, really, that I find rather tiring. What do you think of English food? Well, English food is healthy, but I wouldn't like to have it every day. It's rather, I wouldn't say dull, but too bland for my taste. What about the English weather? It's very changeable. It's cooler here in summer. When the sun's shining, it's very pleasant indeed, with green parks, trees, very beautiful. I don't like winter in England. It is very depressing, especially when it drizzles. In fact, I love this country. Thank you very much. Now the interviewer talks with Peter, who is American but has been living in Britain for seven years. Listen to what he says about Britain. As you listen, complete the notes by writing no more than three words in the space provided. First, look at questions 29 to 32. Now listen and answer questions 29 to 32. Hello, Peter. You've been in Britain for quite a long time now. Yes, for seven years. What do you think of the English weather? Well, it's rather cloudy and depressing, but I like spring and autumn best. I think they are the loveliest time of the year. And what about English food? I think the English food is dull and there is very limited selection of dishes. But there are many excellent restaurants serving food from almost every country in the world, such as Italian, French, Greek, Indian, Chinese food. And what about the English people? How have you found them? I find them very reserved and not very open. The English people intensely dislike social intercourse and do not like to talk actually to others about themselves or have any interest in knowing other people's business. If there are two people in a carriage in England, it is likely that each will read his own newspaper without exchanging a word. How about in the United States? Well, it's very different. We start conversations with people in the street, in the subway. We're a lot more enthusiastic and spontaneous than people here. But it seems when you get to know them, they're very friendly. I've got many English friends now in England. What about your impression of living here? I think life's a lot easier and more efficient in the States. It's easier to make money and it's easier to spend it. Shops are open all the time over there. Here in England, you've got to race to reach the supermarket by 5.30. In the States, there are all sorts of services to make life easier. But I find life here safer and more relaxed. Americans work much harder than you do. For us, work is the most important thing in our lives. But to the English people, their private lives are important. Their holidays are important. You know, holidays seem to be longer here. Well, I take it you have a pretty negative opinion of England. You would think so from this interview, wouldn't you? No, in fact, I really love this country. I find life much more enjoyable. Maybe I've got into English habits and got used to the English way of life. You know, I go home once a year and always look forward to coming back here. OK, thank you. That's the end of Section 3. Now you have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. In section 4, you will hear a talk about language families and answer questions numbered 33 to 41. First, you'll have some time to look at questions 33 to 41.
Now listen to the talk and fill in the table with the information you need. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about some large language families. I'll start my talk with two questions. Do you know how many languages are used throughout the world today? How many major language families are there? Okay, there are more than 3,000 languages used throughout the world today. Almost all of these languages belong to a much smaller number of language families. All of the languages within a language family are related, and all of them have a similar history. Therefore, the grammar, vocabulary, and sounds of related languages are similar. In addition, the way of thinking and the style of talking among related languages is similar. Even though there are over 3,000 languages that are used today, there are only about 20 to 30 major language families. Let's take a brief look at some of the largest language families. Each of these large families includes many individual languages. The language that we are using now is English, as everybody knows. English has become a world language because of its establishment as a mother tongue outside England. It's spoken by 320 million people. English is a member of the Indo-European language family. This large language family includes most of the languages that are spoken throughout Europe. Languages such as English, French, and Greek. Of course, nowadays many Indo-European languages. Are spoken in other parts of the world. For instance, Spanish, which is an Indo-European language, is spoken throughout South and Central America, but originally it was spoken only in Europe. Another large language family is the Afro-Asiatic family. It's spelt it A F R O A S I A T I C. The Afro-Asiatic family includes most languages. In the area of North Africa, languages such as Arabic, which is spoken throughout the Middle East and many of the local languages of the Sahara Desert region, such as Hausa, are members of the same family. Another large family is Bantu, B A N T U. Bantu includes most of the languages spoken in Central and Southern Africa. Languages such as Swahili, which has millions of speakers, and smaller languages. Such as Zulu, which has close to a hundred thousand speakers, belong to the Bantu family. There are over two hundred and fifty members of this family. In the past few hundred years, there has been a great deal of change in Africa, and outside languages such as French are now spoken in some areas of Central Africa and Southern Africa. A fourth large group of languages is the Sino-Tibetan family. Sino-Tibetan includes all dialects of Chinese, which is perhaps the most widely used language in the world. There are nearly 800 million speakers of Chinese dialects. Sino-Tibetan also includes the languages of Southeast Asia, languages such as Vietnamese and Thai. Of course, not all the languages of East Asia belong to this family. Some languages, such as Japanese, seem to be completely unrelated to the Sino-Tibetan family. Still, another major language family is Polynesian. I'll spell it: P O L Y N E S I A N. The Polynesian languages are island languages. They are spoken on the islands around Indonesia, and on the many islands eastward, all the way to Hawaii, and on the islands west, all the way to Madagascar, off the east coast of Africa. Hawaiian and Indonesian are examples of Polynesian languages. Apparently, these languages were spread by travelers from island to island, and then each group of islands developed its own individual language. These five language groups or language families that we have mentioned here are only a few of the major language families from around the world. There are many more. You should also note that each major language family. Has several smaller families within it. That is the end of section four. Now you have half a minute to check your answers.